Hello, everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. I hope you're having a great day today, and I'm so glad you are joining me on another video. Today, we're going to be talking about three things that I love to use to make my planner most productive. So this is going to be across to the board with planners, but of course, you know, I'm relating it to the planner styles that I use, which is Happy Planner. Recently, I've uh, been using my Erin Condren planner. So these are just the planners that I've been using, but these should be across the board productivity tips for any planner babe out there. So let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future content and all the fun that we're going to have here. And if you're returning, welcome back. I'm so glad you are here. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so you figured out you're a paper planner person. You know you need the paper. You know you don't do good without having paper in your planner. And tech is not for you. What do you do? How to be more, more productive? What do you do to make yourself more productive? Is there anything you shouldn't do to be more productive? That's another video. We'll have to address that later. But here are the things that I feel like you should be able to do or should do to make yourself most productive using your paper planner. So, number one. Now these are no particular order, they're all great productivity tips, but these are things that I believe will make you most productive. So no particular order. Number one. And I did a whole video on them because I feel that their value is so high, but habit trackers. Habit trackers come in many forms. This is the habit tracker that was um, sold with the uh, fitness tracker, Happy Planner Girl line. But um, they're everywhere. There's different forms of them. This is a habit tracker as well. There's different kinds of them. There's some that say habit tracker. Erin Condren inside of, they have a dashboard. Let me open up to it. That has habit trackers right on it. Can you see that there? Yeah. And um, yeah, so habit trackers in any shape or form are going to help you to be super productive. And we're going to talk about why. It, if you are a visual person, and really even if you're not a visual person, but if you're a visual person, tracking habits is something that you might think you're doing well, but then when you look back on it, you're like, well, actually, I really didn't do it. If you don't have a visual or any way to measure what you've done and what kind of habits you're trying to track, how are you supposed to appropriately determine whether or not you're making strides towards your goal? So I have felt like habit trackers have really changed the game as far as what I'm doing and whether I'm doing it right and if I'm doing what I said I was going to do and how I'm doing on it and all these different factors to it. I don't know that I could have done it without having habit trackers as part of my daily preparation in life. So thank you habit trackers for making me more productive. But regardless of what planner you use, they come in sticker forms, they come in paper forms, they come in dashboard forms. They're out there. You can draw your own. Basically, the idea is that you put your habit, and if it's waking up early, and then you track the days, you can do it whether weekly, you can do it monthly, you can do it however you could just, you know, however you want to do it. But you track the days that you actually adequately did the thing that you said you were going to do, and then you look back on it and say, well, five out of the months that I wanted to, I woke up early, so I'm not doing that good. I need to correct, figure out what's going wrong and how I need to change it. Maybe it's you want to make your lead generation calls because you're in sales. Maybe it's that you want to eat better because you're feeling a little fluffy. Maybe whatever it might be, you can do it with a habit tracker. It helps. Productivity at its finest. I was feeling a little fluffy and that's why I started with using my habit trackers. All right, number two. Number two of one, one way to be optimization productivity goal setting. Goal setting, goal setting, goal setting. If you do not have a plan for your day with goals in mind, you will not do very well with your planner. So I recommend, I don't care what planner you have, and I don't care if it's in the planner or it's outside of the planner, I use for my main goal setting, I use power sheets. Um, they're incredible. Just, I literally was discovered them, and I can't even believe 
that I did not discover them before. Incredible. But, and I mean, I mean that honestly, like I have been so impressed with what it has done for my productivity. It's just unreal to me, but happy planner release these. I hope they release more of them. They're goal sheets for your planner. They are very similar to, it doesn't have the prep work that my, my um, power sheets do, but it has a lot of goals in there. And it doesn't, the thing about goals is it doesn't really take a whole lot of goal planning, except the only thing I will say is that in order to effectively set goals, I think that you need to have a plan of action and how to get them done. So if your goal is to lose 500 pounds, because that's my goal, of course, no, but no, if your goal, okay, let's just say 10. If your goal is to lose 10 pounds, well, how are you going to lose 10 pounds? Are you going to exercise? Are you going to eat good? And what is eating good? I mean, my eating good may not be eating good for you, it, vice versa. Are you going to take some, like, you just need to be very specific. So it's like, I want to lose 10 pounds by walking three times a week for 15 minutes and eating juicing. And these are the juicers I'm going to use. Like, however, you just need to be extremely specific with your goals. But sometimes it can be very overwhelming when you're goal planning to have that in without. So that's why I have really loved the power sheets is because they like break it down. Like they have your why, they have what you should do, they have starting steps, they have everything that you would need to do. These are great too because they have your weekly action item and everything like that. It just doesn't break down how to really get there. So you need to kind of figure out the goal and then break it down like this. Whether or not you put it in a journal, um, I have this great journal that I've been working in and you know, you can jot down your journaling items in here. There is no wrong answer, but you need to have your goals on paper, not digital form. Just like we have a paper planner, you need to have your goals on paper, and then you need to use that information of what your goals are and put that in your planner daily. Take one small step a day to make your goals happen. One small step a day. Don't make it overwhelming. Don't discourage yourself. Don't try to do a million things, but like when you look back and you realize that you've met all these goals because you actually had them laid out in your planner, you'll be so impressed. I have had my goals in my planner for different things, and I color code my goals, so that's why there's a bunch of colors on them, but I have used these, I use power sheets, I transfer some of that information into my planner, I have them always, 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 wherever I am, I did one for January as well, um, somewhere. I don't know where, it was in January. They're, they're always with me. So if you want to be successful in your goals, make sure you have them laid out in front of you and you know what you're doing and you are actually focusing on what those look like. I have specific things I want to accomplish this year and I'm breaking it down to determine how I need to do that. But if you're setting your schedule every week and you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, like I have not set my schedule for this week yet. Where is it? I have not set my schedule for this week. I'm working on it. I'm working on some stuff. Um, I, when I'm making decisions on what that looks like, I have to absolutely know 100% what I'm doing. And if I am looking at it like I don't know what I'm doing yet because I really have not um, determined my goals, so like what am I waking up and doing every day, it's not going to get me where I want to be in life. So make sure your goals are in front of you. Make sure they're around you as often as it possibly can. And make sure that you are sticking with them in a place that you can see them. Don't hide them. Don't write them down and hide them away. Make sure they're in front of you. So I highly recommend if you do have a discount bound planner, it makes it really easy to pop in a page of them in front of you. If you have a coil bound planner, any other type of planner that you don't have, um, the same way they have the punch in clips that you can punch them in and tape, take washi tape, tape it to the top. It doesn't matter. Just get them in front of you. Put them in a frame right on your desk. It doesn't matter. Just get them in front of you. So that is definitely way number one that I would say. All right, well, two, number two. All right, number three. And these are the, <laughs> this may seem silly and this may seem very, very, very small. But it is the way that I feel like has made me so much more productive. And, and especially, especially I had to throw a yawn in there, um, in the aspect of video recording and everything like that. Have in front of you at all times the list of things that are important to do in order. I love these little cards. 
that have made it very easy for me to use. For example, I just showed you, I have not planned out my week yet, but I do have, um, if I can find it. Yeah, I do have in my cards, I do have little notes that I need to take, what I need to do. I do plan out some videos on them. Um, so sneak peek on videos if you're, but like that's how I judge my week's videos and what I'm doing. And a lot of times I record in advance to help me get them out, but I know what I'm doing per day, which is really helpful if you have specific tasks per day that you need to get done. I like to use them. I have used them. I could pull every single week probably. Um, I could probably pull cards out of there. I have, yeah, like I have tons of these little cards in my planner all the time. These are different calls. These are different things I need to do. Um, here's my children's bedtime routine, which I probably need to put in there. Like literally every single week there is more of them in there. So I love these things. I have felt like they have been just the most useful little tool. They're not huge. They don't take up a lot of space, but you can use and get done what you need to get done. They're on all of the coordinated accessory packs. You have them at the very bottom. Um, if you don't like Happy Planner products, you don't have a disc bound system, just little note cards like it. I like the cardstock. I like the thickness of it. I also like feeling like if I throw it away at the end of the week, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes when you get these big pages, you feel like inclined to keep it longer. It's just a real thing subliminally. These are also a little bit thicker than, um, than the paper that they have. And I like that too. They're a little bit better paperweight than the paper inside the planner, which I feel like is helpful. Any of the coordinated accessories have them. They all have the same general idea. There's different themes to each one, but they all have checklists on them normally. And I have found like that's been really important to really accomplishing the tasks in my day, or maybe laying out certain tasks for the week instead of writing them down on individual days. They're all in one place. So a lot of times, like for example, I have my children's kids' bedtime routine. I have the general idea of what I want to do and when I want to start it. Um, I have been horrible with bedtime routines. I, it's not something I'm skilled at. I'm a night owl. I let my children be night owls. They're little. I am all over the place. We would forget to brush teeth at night sometimes. Like it's just a skill that I was not skilled at. And I really wanted to change that this year. So I decided to create a little just snap card routine. So every night when I'm writing down, did my kids go to bed on time? I'm able to track it and see what did I accomplish? And these are the things that I want to accomplish if in fact I am doing it. It's a small card. It does not take up a lot of room, but it provides me so much clarity that does not infringe upon viewing my planner week after week. So I have felt like these have been super productivity based and such a small step to be able to do that. So make sure you pick these up in any form or fashion because you will be very thankful that you did and have plenty of room for them. And those are just me three small ways that you can be more productive using a paper planner. Any planner, like I said, it doesn't matter. I have Erin Condren, I have Happy Planner, I have um, some bullet journals, I have a lot of different things, but those are the ways to do it, small steps towards big goals. So make sure that you have your goals in front of you. Make sure that you're tracking your habits appropriately and make sure that you have any lists that you want also in front of you in a card where you can do it. So. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you will use your planner to be the most productive as possible. I do plan on sharing some productivity tips with you because I feel like it will help you in the long run. So I'm very excited to see if, uh, how that will turn out. But let me know. If you love productivity tips and you want to hear more of them, please let me know in the comments. I want to make sure I'm serving you to the best of my ability. So thank you all for watching and have a great rest of your day.